I'm glad everyone's back, hopefully refreshed. And we would start with session two now. Technology frontiers newest applications and their use for integrated information management. Now, on the agenda, it still states Hans-Peter Bauer from BMZ, who unfortunately can't be with us today, but we do have Stefanie Ruff with us, who will take over and deliver us a little speech to get us started. Thank you. Esteemed guests and participants, um, as Sebastian just kindly said, I'm not Hans Bauer, as you can see, <laughs> but it's my pleasure to be here and to warmly welcome you also on behalf of the German Development um, Ministry. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing the second session, Technology Frontiers, newest applications and their use for integrated information management, and of course, its implications for social protection. Given the wealth of innovation and useful applications in the field, I will provide you with a kind of a virtual map um, as I'm um, uh, digital illiterate, as we were <laughs> asked this morning. Um, it also was very helpful for me. Um, and you can, might use it to locate and navigate the examples that will be presented in the session later on and the snapshots uh, that I will briefly present now. This map, um, which delineates the frontiers that we can span and the limits that we are testing, has three dimensions. So, um, there are new means of collecting and for collecting information. This is the first dimension. And then there are new means for analyzing data and information. Blockchain and machine learning are just uh, are on our agenda today. And thirdly, there are the practical implications for using such new information and analysis. And of course, this should also include data security and protection concerns. So with regard to the first dimension, um, what are these newest applications and um, how do, you better collect, how do they better collect information? I would like to provide you some of the examples. And it's a um, new means of gathering information, but it also applies to using old tools in new ways. The first example refers to satellite imagery, which can be used to identify those in need, for example, by spotting thatched roofs as an indication of poverty, as opposed, for example, as roof, metal roofs, and it's already used by Gift Directly, who some of you might know. Um, but satellite imagery can also be used for geographic targeting following a natural disaster or documentation of refugee routes and destruction in conflict ridden areas. And this is already used by Amnesty International. Similarly, GPS tracking as a second example can be used to track moving populations such as nomads and it's used already by the World Bank in Somalia. The third example is smartphones. Um, we heard this morning everybody of us is carrying smartphones and smartphone ownership is rising worldwide. About 50% of the population in the Asia, Asia Pacific and Latin America have smartphones, more than 30% in Sub-Saharan Africa. This offers new ways of collecting information directly from users, as opposed to otherwise expensive and time-consuming household service, for example, on poverty incidents in hard-to-access areas. New insights could be derived from maybe the amount and regularity of top-ups or of preferred calling times and how this relates to working times. The fourth example is um, the so-called fintech platforms and mobile applications such as First Access that help to collect consumer data to enable lenders in low and middle income countries to identify excluded population groups from financial inclusion. And my last example refers to drones that can, can be used for monitoring and mapping coastlines and mangroves such in a German supported project um, in Vietnam, which helps to assess the risks for people living and depending on those areas. Now I come to the second dimension on how can information be better accessed and analyzed. One new way of better analyzing and using collected information is blockchain. One of the examples is, going, is presented later. 
Tracking and storing data on transactions in real time is used to follow delivery processes, even trans transactions across borders. In healthcare, it is already used to track the supply chain of medication. The second example I'd like to present is artificial intelligence and machine learning, as they have been used as buzzwords in the international development community in recent years, and they are being applied in low and middle income countries. For example, in the health sector, artificial intelligence technology is integrated into wristbands to measure the nutritional status of children. An app in Tanzania, also supported by the German Development Corporation, is using image recognition technology based on machine learning to assist farmers in recognizing plant disease. Tech giants have long been experimenting with using big data for social goods, such as Google Flu and Google Dengue Trends. They uh, analyzed user search queries to track regional occurrences of diseases. The discontinuation in 2015, however, highlights quite well the shortcomings of such tools and new challenges for implementation, such as reliability of information and transparency versus data protection. Algorithms, as uh, used by Google, were not foolproof. Issues around methods and data made it dangerously to rely on Google Flu Trends for decision making and a lack of transparency stressed the importance of balancing private interests with public needs. And now I turn to the third dimension of the practical implica implications and how can such collected and analyzed uh, information be applied responsibly. We need to take seriously the challenges that come with these technologies and also the concerns regarding the way we handle sensitive data. The reliability of data is an important basis for responsible use. Artificial intelligent has, intelligence has shown in some instances to replicate human bias and discrimination with regards to ethnicity, gender, and income when collecting and analyzing data. Now machine learning models are audited for discrimination and bias to make more equitable decisions around deploying predictive risk assessment tools. Another significant fa factor is trust in institutions. Big data is often stored in public institutions predominantly located in the global north. Stricter data protection laws in these countries have created more willingness among citizens and companies to give their data to public entities. Similarly, strict data regulation for the private sector is required to ensure trust. The rights to consent, privacy, security, and ownership, and also practices of transparency and openness are supported by some development partners who are members of the Responsible Data Forum. And the UN are entertaining the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data to promote responsible data practices. It's on us to join and to share and ensure these responsible data practices. So wrapping up um, with regard to the implications for social protection, all these three dimensions, the new ways of collecting, analyzing, and using information responsibly, responsibly open new doors for the design, delivery, and monitoring of social protection. Firstly, only through access to reliable information on people's needs can the goal of universal social protection be reached. We thus consider integrated social register a key element of universal social protection. Secondly, new ways of analyzing information can make processes of social protection design, delivery, and monitoring both more effective and efficient. And this supports us, also in the political sphere, to promote universal social protection. Thirdly, information regarding health, income or assets, and personal data is extremely sensitive. We talked about it. And for us as development partners, we need to act responsible and in line with the people's and countries' concerns, priorities, and customs. And even more so, considering the potential of technology and integrated information management. So this was my very small um, virtual map to guide you through the next session. And uh, I open now the floor for a variety of exciting speakers and examples. And I have the pleasure to briefly introduce them. Before then, we will hear some more about logistics. So the first um, example is um, using GIS, Geographic Information System, 
system and integrated information management on the case of Negra in India. And um, Ajeev Ahal is the director of the uh, Natural Resource Management at GIZ India. He's overseeing several projects, including Maneka, with focus on natural resource management protection, production, and support systems. And Mr. Hall is more than 30 years, has more than 30 years of experience as a development practitioner with multiple positions both in India and the African continent. Then we have the second example, which uh, refers to the open source towards integrated information management as at the example of Open IMS. And we warmly welcome uh, Dr. Madan. And uh, he is the executive director of the Health Insurance Board of Nepal. And under his leadership, the board has been implementing social health insurance in Nepal since 2016. He's a doctor by training and has served in various clinical and managerial positions in public hospitals of the government in Nepal. And he's accompanied by his colleague, Saurav, who is the Deputy Chief Technical Advisor of GIZ Program Support to the Health Sector. And then we have the potential of blockchain and social protection by Kate Georgeson, and I'm, I haven't been able to identify her. Oh, okay. She's a consultant in Humanity X, a Hague-based organization researching technology in the humanitarian and development sector, and she focuses on blockchain technology and advises charities, NGOs, government bodies, and social enterprises on whether and how blockchain could be of benefit to them. And then lastly, we have um, the example of machine learning and focus. Uh, forecast-based financing at the experience of the Togo Red Cross, and it's going to be presented by uh, 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 Pablo Suarez. Um, he is the Associate Director of Research and Innovation at the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center. And he has consulted for the UN Development Program, the World Food Program, the World Bank, Oxfam America, and about 20 other international humanitarian and development organizations. Thank you, Stefanie Ruff. Now, when we...